everything you do changes your DNA, and then that can change the DNA of your children, or future children. I'm not here to pressure you into anything. Anthony here for D News, and you've probably heard of epigenetics. This is the idea that while the structure of your DNA doesn't change, parts of it can be turned on and off through chemical changes in your body. It's called DNA expression, and it has a lot to do with your behavior and lifestyle. So smoking and eating too much can make the genes for obesity in your body express themselves strongly. Psychological trauma and highly stressful events can affect the genes that control the brain receptor for oxytocin, which is this hormone associated with love and trust. People who sleep poorly for just a week can show changes in 700 genes. Now the good news is that the opposite is also true. So leading a healthy life can cause your body to turn on beneficial genes. You can also reduce the genetic risk for diseases that are hereditary in your family. There's even an idea that you pass those changes on to your children. It's called epigenetic inheritance. And we used to think that its effects were minimal, that genes would reset their on off switches between generations. But a small study published this week by the proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences showed that it may play a huge part in a child's development. So researchers tracked 20 women, all mothers who had had gastric bypass surgery and lost around 100 pounds. All of them had children before and after the surgery. Not for the study, but because they wanted a family. When the team compared the children born after the mother's surgery to those born before, there were about 5,698 genes that were expressed differently. And most of them were genes that are important for heart health and metabolism. And when the doctors tested the kids with the changed genes, they had healthier insulin levels, blood pressures, and their weights were better than the other kids. Epigenetics might even control love. Love, man! There are these prairie voles that mate for life, they build nests together, they get studied a lot because their relationships look a lot like human ones. In a study published by Nature Neuroscience, researchers took two voles that had been around each other for six hours but hadn't mated and they injected them with this drug that was supposed to stop methylation of the genes that controlled oxytocin and vasopressin, which are the big love and trust hormones, right? Total love connection. The voles fell for each other, and when their brains were compared to a couple of voles that made it on their own, the oxytocin and vasopressin receptors looked similar. Love causes the change, the change causes love. Something interesting. If the scientists injected two voles who didn't know each other with the drug, the love connection didn't happen. Which brings up the big question with epigenetics. How much control does it really have over us? Those voles needed some sort of pre-existing bond, even if their genes were telling them to build a tiny vole love nest and have 2.5 vole children. You might be able to restrict or strengthen the expression of a gene somewhat, but can it really fundamentally change you? What do you think? Let me know down below and subscribe for more D News.